For centuries, Haudenosaunee people have conducted ceremonies throughout the year that celebrate the bounty sprung forth from the earth. These ceremonies mark time within a yearly calendar and take their cues from nature. Like right now, you can hear this, uh, this buzzing right now, this, um, I, I believe it's a zikeda. Um, in the language, we refer to it as chiganastungo uh, or lanastata, and it means uh, that it, it dries the corn. Like you can hear it right now, and that's a, a bio indicator that uh, like as a faith keeper, we're supposed to know that it's almost time for a green corn ceremony and the corn's almost ready to harvest. The cycle of ceremonies, like that's one of the things that we need to be aware of is uh, everything that's going on in the environment because the environment dictates when a ceremony is to be held and it's founded on, on the, the, the natural environment. Today, Mohawks who practice a traditional way of thinking still observe these ceremonies at a longhouse, which was once a family dwelling of our people. Now, the longhouse is a setting for many ceremonies throughout the year, including social dances, funerals, and weddings. It's extremely important to continue the practice of our, our culture, our language, and our ceremonies because that's what identifies us as Ogunwe people. And it's also uh, an entire volume of ancient knowledge and it connects us to an ancient past. It helps us live in the present and it, and it pushes us toward the future. It makes us absolutely distinct from everybody else. You know, I often hear the old lady say, culture happens inside the practice. So it's not enough to just talk about it. You need to really put it into motion and, and do it. The cycle of ceremonies follows the natural seasons on Turtle Island and most times reflect what the earth provides to Ungwehua people. So the cycle of ceremonies is a continuation of the Ohonda Galiwadeko, the words before all else. It puts us in a place of not just saying and expressing our gratitude, but to also put it inside a ceremony. So it starts with our midwinter and that would be our new year. So when uh, the environment starts to warm up, it goes into like our sap and then our maple ceremony. And with uh, everything heating up in the ground and like the ice and the snow melting, it, we would prepare to plant. So that would, there would be like a seed ceremony. And then when it starts getting hot in June, that's our strawberry ceremony. So it would go to string bean and then green corn is coming up. And then after that would be harvest and then yeah, it would go to end of season, and then that's when hunters would be released, and they would go out and gather like the game animals, small to big, like uh, whatever foods, and they would prepare again like for the winter, and then the cycle would reset back again to uh, midwinter. These ceremonies unite the community and provide a sense of traditional structure, a sense of belonging. I don't think I would like to consider our ways old. They're, they're ancient, but they're relevant. They never lose their charm. They, they never lose their meaning. You know, the thing about ceremonies that a lot of people don't know is that inside the lawn house, when the actual ceremony is going on, the men are the speakers of those ceremonies. But what a lot of people don't know, it's the women who work outside of the lawn house before the ceremony and after the ceremony that create the details and the intricate workings and organizing of those ceremonies to happen. And so I just wanted people to know that it is, it is the wisdom of women that get these done. And it is them that the stories come alive and the language lives. And it's a beautiful thing because there's not a single person that's left out. We all have duties and responsibilities and everybody has a part, so they feel a part and they belong. These ceremonies and celebrations are also essential in keeping the culture and language alive. We're lucky, despite the fact that, you know, colonial governments try to outlaw our ceremonies. We have much gratitude to pay to the ancestors who took it underground and, and preserved it for us and saved it. And now we're in a new freedom without persecution to express ourselves openly and freely and to show our children, most importantly, and our grandchildren, what it is to be Ogahua with inside these ceremonies. I want them to know that we're working really hard 
to revitalize and indigenize our ways again, our life ways. So now for the next seventh generation, if I was gonna send a message to my great, 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 great granddaughter, seven generations from now, I would say I loved you enough. I loved you enough to hang on. <laughs>